healed for everyone. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We ask for rain, Lord. We ask for more rain. Yeah. 
every voice, just the voices.
personal come on God show me your glory Jesus show me your glory show me your glory God oh show me your glory Jesus show me your glory Show me your glory. Show me your glory. We want to see you, Jesus. Show me your glory. Show me your glory.
Every voice lifted up. We want more. Show me 
bright and morning star. Bright and morning star, your eyes blaze like fire, shining like the sun. Your
Oh 
the name above every name. Jesus. Jesus. What a beautiful name. Jesus. It's time now for us to give to the Lord. You can take your seats if you want, but I just um, encourage you just to remain in His presence. Mark 4 verse 3 onward says, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow, and it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on the stony ground where it did not have much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. But other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased, and produced some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100. This, many of you know, is the parable of the sower, and it's, and it's usually used um, in relation to hearing the word of God. But it also has more literal implications of what happens when we sow our seed in the right places, in good soil. The good soil is nothing but the kingdom of God. It's God's house. It's God's work. And when we sow our seeds into, into what God is doing, into His house, into His kingdom, we are going to see exponential returns. We are going to see 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold, 200-fold, 500-fold increases as we sow our seed into God's kingdom. See, God's given each one of us seed. The scripture says that God gives seed to the sower and bread for food. The seed, it's for sowing, it's not for eating. What are we doing with the seed that God has given us? Where are we sowing it? What are we doing with, with, with the time that God has given us? What are we doing with the resources that God has given us? What are we doing with, with the, the gifts, the talents, the skills that God has given us? What are we doing with the finances that God has given us? Where are we sowing it? Are we sowing it in good soil?
It's his kingdom. It's all about his kingdom. The good soil, the good ground. I want the ushers to pass out the offering envelopes. And I just want everybody to take a minute and just think about where you're sowing your seeds. Are we sowing it in good ground? What are we doing with it? But other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased and produced some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100. And I'm prophetically going to add to that and say 200, 500, 1,000. You can claim more. There's no limit. And I also believe that we are in a season right now where we don't really have to wait that long to see a return on the seed that we're sowing. I believe we are in a season where we're gonna see immediate yields, we're gonna see immediate returns. See, God, He's not a debtor to anyone because he, your seed will bear fruit. And, and, and I believe there are many of you who've already started experiencing that, that immediate return of what you're sowing in. There are four ways to give. They're up on the screen. You can pay by cash. You can pay by credit or debit card. You can pay by check. You can pay uh, online. You can pay by bank transfer. We've covered all the bases. If there are any other ways to give, do let us know. There was a time when we only took cash and so there was always an excuse at least I know sometimes I used to use that excuse saying oh man I didn't bring cash today but we just want to give everybody an opportunity to be blessed your seed will bear fruit and it will bear much fruit amen so if you're ready, you can come forward and put your offerings in the boxes here. Hallelujah, Father, I pray, Father, that even as we sow our seed this morning, Lord, that we will see an exponential increase, Lord. That there will be a multiplication, oh Father, of every seed that is sown, Father. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to give to you, Lord. And we pray a blessing over every offering that has been made in this place. We thank you, Jesus. We just want to continue to worship the Lord, so if you can all stand to your feet.
sink in right now. Do we serve a holy God without blemish? My God. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for pouring it out, for releasing the floodgates. Thank you, God, that we live in a prophetic age, God. You are so good. We glorify your name, God. We lift you up. There is nobody like you. We worship you, God. We worship you. You are holy. You are holy. Thank you, God. Yes, Jesus. God, I thank you for the rain that you've poured out, the glory rain. A couple weeks ago, our pastors were talking about the um, um, ask for rain in the time of the rain. It's the time of the rain. It's the time of the, the rain of glory. Jesus, thank you for what you've given us. And thank you that it will continue because you are never ending, boundless. forever. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Jesus, you are so good. <laughs> Thank you, worship team. That was amazing. Really. Thank you, Jesus. God is good all the time <laughs> it's so much fun to get to worship him it's so good I missed y'all how are you doing <laughs> good Whew. it's good up here I'll tell you that much a um, couple of announcements uh, we are Capstone Church you probably know that um, 
we have two services here and also one in South Hall. Um, Rakesh, our other pastor, is in Ra uh, he's in South Hall today. So um, we have a couple of things going on this week. Um, uh, the, the awakening, London awakening is still going on. So um, feel free to come to that. It's Wednesdays through Saturday, um, 7 to 10-ish give or take an hour or two. Um, actually, don't take. It's only give. <laughs> uh, it's always after. But um, the, we also have the uh, Father's Feast on Monday nights uh, starting at 7. Uh, if you do want to help serve with that, talk to Daniel, the big man himself over there. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we, uh, we also have a Tuesday prayer starting at 7, um, which is it's. It's a glorious time. I haven't gotten to come the last couple of weeks, but when I was coming, my goodness, God's glory is here every day, and it never leaves. Um, it's always with us wherever we go. So this week, we have um, Sharon Stone with us on Wednesday, uh, so uh, make sure to come to that. She's a prophet, both to London and the world, really, uh, but... Uh, she's uh, based here in UK. Then in September, we have uh, uh, Jeremy Nelson coming back with us. Um, we're, the dates are still to be confirmed, but it's, uh, he's coming for sure. So uh, make sure to keep your s September open because <laughs> uh, he'll, <laughs> he'll be here. Um, you won't want to miss it. And uh, so... We are thrilled to have the London Awakening continue. Um, I, when it first started, wasn't sure how long it was going to take, but uh, or how long it was going to be, and now it's <laughs> uh, week ten. We're going into week ten. Wow. Yeah, man. Yeah, give it up for that. Come on, guys, give it up for that. Also, let's give it up for our lovely pastor, <laughs> Mrs. Carrie. Praise God. Have your seats. Um, let's just lift up our hands. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ. What a powerful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Christ my King, what a powerful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus, come on church, what a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. There is no higher name. There is no greater name. There is no name given amongst men in whose name is salvation except the name of Jesus. And all we need in our lives is Jesus. Yeah. That's all we need. Jesus makes us complete. Jesus makes us whole. And Jesus makes us happy. So nudge your neighbor and say, Jesus makes me happy. 
Uh, wait, wait, wait. Some of you he made happy. Some of you he made grumpy. I'm just saying, okay? So nudge your neighbor, greet somebody in the name of Jesus and say, Jesus loves you. Somebody say, hey. 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 Praise God. Now, I, I, I have to say this. Um, Jesus is the answer. That's all we need to know. Whatever you need, he's got an answer for. And he will give it. He's not a withholding God. He is not a withholding God. Okay, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Some of you say, yeah. Some of you are like, I'm not sure. Because yesterday I asked him for uh, lightning to hit my enemy. It didn't happen. <laughs> you know, and you're like, oh, nah, he withhold, withheld. No, no, no. Okay, I want you to say this. Jesus, Jesus. Is, all powerful. is all powerful. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no. The church needs to believe that Jesus is all powerful. Okay, now, I, you, you. There's no point hearing me. Really. All you need is Jesus. Amen. When we come into service, and this is often what happens, we treat it like a movie. You know, the movie has the introduction. Then there is the climax. You know, and then there's the solution. So service is like that. You know, the introduction is the worship. You know, if you miss the first 10 minutes, it's okay. No. No. Nudge your neighbor and say no. no. Christianity, full contact sport. Say no. no. Say no. no. And so, and then what happens is, um, and then, you know, we're always waiting. I don't know about you, but we come into service and we often wait for the next song, for the next word, for the next thing. And I'm saying the gospel is now. The gospel is now. I mean, I don't know. I used to struggle with this. I used to always think that my breakthrough will come tomorrow. And I sit back and relax. It's good to relax. But there's also a belief. You know, and, and this, the belief that we need is that the, the, the answers are for today. I'll tell you a story. So um, years ago... Uh, when, I, when I got saved, I was the first in my family to be saved. Like many of you know the story. I was the first in my family to be saved. And my, um, in my house, the, the, the week that I got saved, okay, I was at a Christian retreat. My elder brother had converted to Islam, okay, and my second brother was at a Hindu um, pilgrimage place. Imagine my mom's plight. I get, I mean, I get saved, radically saved. I, I call her. I call her from, from the retreat center, you know, and I called her up and I said, Mommy, Mommy, you have to know about this Jesus. And she was like, what? And I said, you have to know about this Jesus. And I said, you know, all the things that we've been doing, it's wrong. That's not a good call to get from your daughter, okay? I said, we've been wrong all these years. And she was like, we'll talk when you come home. <laughs> and that was, and so I got home and I remember... Um, my family was not happy I got saved. They were really not happy. And, um, and um, long, like my, my, they, were, they didn't let me go to church for a long time. And that's why I value coming to church. I think many of us have had it too easy. I remember my mom, and, um, it, it was such a tough situation for me. Because they said, honor what, you know, they said, honor what your family's saying. Um, and um, and they, they wouldn't let me go to church. And um, I used to wonder how I will remain in the Lord. And just to say this, just uh, anybody, you need to belong to a local church. You need to serve in a local church. And you should have the fellowship of the believers on, if it's Sunday, the Sabbath. That's your Sabbath. You should do that. Amen. There's no excuse for it not happening whatsoever. You know, and this is, this is, and so I remember I wasn't allowed to go in. And um, anyway, my brother, elder brother, he was very much against me um, being in the Lord. Um, he, and I, I have to tell you the story. I used to pray in my room because I wasn't allowed to go anywhere else and pray. 
So I used to sit in my room and I used to pray. And I used to spend hours in prayer. Let me tell you something. Everything that you have is birthed in prayer. What you pray this season will produce your next season. So you want something next season, pray through this season. And so as I was praying and praying in my room, there was this big, um, you know, knock on my door. I would say a bang. You know, my big brother comes and he knocks on my door and he says, can you stop praying? I said, why? And then, um, then he says, can you stop praying? And I said, how do you know I'm praying? And then he said, well, I was doing, you know, they do the five times prayer thing. Um, and he was doing that and, um, in his room. And he said he couldn't pray. And because he couldn't pray, he figured out it was because I was praying. And I kind of just didn't say it out loud, but thought in my mind, greater is he who is in me. Because I'm just smiling. I'm just laying it out there. And anyway, um, about eight months or a year later, I was, at this, um, I was at this place, and suddenly, as I was praying with um, his wife, my sister-in-law, we were sitting together, and we were praying for our family. And as we were praying, I heard the sound of these rushing horses. These horses were coming straight at, and I actually literally moved out of the way because I, I heard these horses come. And um, there was one riding at the front of these horses, and, um, and I, I kind of asked, what is, so what is this? And I nudged my sister-in-law saying, can you hear this? And she said, no. Um, I said, and then the, the horses came close. I asked, what is this? And this voice said this. He said, your brother is going to get saved. Yeah. And I thought, whoa, praise God. I nudged my sister-in-law. You know, and I said, I said, I nudged her and I said, you know what? John Chen's going to get saved maybe in the year, in the next year or so. That's all the faith I had. But that night, as he was driving, he was in a near accident. And he said, someone supernaturally moved his car out of the way. And in the midst of that, that incident, instead of calling on his whatever he was calling on at that time, he called on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And he was irritated with himself. And then within a week, he got saved. He got radically saved. Now I tell you this is a story because, and he's a pastor today, by the way. He serves, he's planting churches all over the place. He's ministering, he's teaching. Um, he loves the Lord, he loves the word, he loves God's people. The power of what I'm saying is this, you know, God can solve whatever situation you're in. Whatever family crisis you're having, whatever personal crisis you're having, all you need is Jesus. That's all we need. The minute we lose hope, we lose our strength. And that's what's happening with the body of Christ. We think that a delayed response means no. My brother got saved radically within that season, like within that week and uh, within the week or 10 days. Um, and it was such a blessing. And I thought everybody else after that would get saved like that. No. And I'm saying this, and um, Jeevan said it during worship. Stephen said it during the announcements. In the time of the latter rain, church, ask for rain. Capstone Church has been hosting the London Awakening for now 10 weeks. We're starting the 10th week. And we can become used to him and his presence. And people often ask me, you know, I study revival in, and I study, um, I study how moves of God took place um, and knowledge is good. Knowledge is really good. Everything is available out there. If you want to be a healing evangelist, 
Learn about every healing evangelist that there is. Find out how they operated. Find out how, you know, read the books, read everything. This is not my sermon, but I'm just coming in and speaking to the church this morning. One of the things that we, in this move of God, that we will be called to do is we will be called to press in. Someone came and asked me, they said, they came and asked me, they said, um, when the awakening started, they said, isn't it going to be easy? I said, no. If it's going to be easy, then everybody could do it. It will, amen. It will cost us everything. I don't mean it as a joke. It will cost us everything. When many of the people came to follow Jesus, Jesus, Jesus said, yeah, I'm happy. You follow me. Come with me now. And then the people said, one, said, I have to go get married. That's, that's great. The other said, I have to bury, the, I have to bury my dad. Said, that's great. But when Jesus is in a place, go with him then. And I know as a team, as a church, our, our church has paid a heavy, a heavy um, price. And it's good. Yeah, it is. It's so good that we get the opportunity. Capstone Church, imagine if, if the awakening happened in, in West London. We'd have to go there every day. Because <laughs> we would. We would go where the Lord is moving, 100%. You would ask where your pastors are, and they, they'd say, well, they're in the awakening. God has been so beneficial and, and so nice to us that he brought it to this house. Hallelujah. And it's our privilege. It's our privilege. So turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5. I want to say this. As we continue to host his presence, we will be like the house of Obed-Edom. There will be blessing. But there will be cost to be high priests and ministers to the Lord. Amen. Matthew chapter 5. Not your neighbor. Say, I'm going to be happy. Come on. Say, I'm going to be happy. How many of you know the Beatitudes? Yeah? We should know the Beatitudes because this should be our attitude. Hallelujah. Now, um, I just, I'm just going to read this out and then we're just going to go through this portion of scripture. Matthew 5 verse 3 says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Okay, we can all read it together if you want. Okay, F uh, Matthew 5 verse 3 again. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Amen. Amen. I wasn't planning to start on this, but I'm going to start with this one here. Blessed are, verse 11, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Now, one thing that we find here is this. Hi. So 
So it says, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Now, this is one of the portions of scripture that makes me laugh because as Christians, we, we like to quote this. When anything goes wrong or anything that happens in our lives, we kind of like to bla um, say, you know, blessed are we. Now, for me, I like this word falsely. Hallelujah. I like this word falsely. Blessed are those who persecute. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely. And I'm actually going to speak today about the character required to be revival. Now, revival is you and I. We are the temple of the living God. Revival is you and I. You and I carry revival. Now when Solomon pre prepared the temple, when Solomon built the temple for uh, hosting God's presence, there were specific requirements of the temple. And there are certain requirements if we want to sustain revival, if we want to carry revival that must be seen within you and I. Otherwise, Capstone Church, we will be known as the place that hosted revival for 10 weeks. We don't want that. We want to be a place of revival for the rest of our lives. Hallelujah. For the rest of our lives, we want to be the place of revival. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just bless him. We bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you for all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Now let's just close our eyes for a moment. Father God, we pray, Father, that you will release your grace, Father, for us to discern, Father, where we are in our journey, Father. Give us the grace to discern where we are. Catch what you're telling us and let us move in that direction. Verse 3 says this, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now this word blessed actually translates to the word happy. Now nudge your neighbor and say happy. happy. Say happy. 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 You know how the Old Testament, how the Old Testament, um, the last line of the Old Testament is? It says curse. The last line of Malachi ends with a curse. But the first sermon that Jesus preached starts with blessed. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus came with a blessing. And with the blessing, he came with this, with this new thing. He spoke about gladness. Now, the only reason we'll have gladness is when we have hope. And I'm speaking here today for the church to have hope. To have dreams, Amen. to have spiritual God-given ambition. We need to have desire to do something on this earth. We must have a desire to birth something new. We must have a desire to give birth on this earth. Because most of us are so-so. We, we get used to, you know, the minute we get saved, we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then two days later, uh. and that is why Paul writing to the church, he said, awake, O oh sleeper, rise from the dead. The church has to arise, dream big Amen. and birth it. You know how many people come and tell pastors, I have this ambition, that ambition. And you ask them, 
You ask them, what did you do with it five years later? He said, you didn't give me permission. You don't need my permission to preach on the streets. You need my permission for the pulpit. <laughs> it's not the pastor's job to create a pulpit for you. Wait, I'm going to clap for that one. Most people in a church are waiting for the pastor to move aside. <laughs> Not in this church. <laughs> you don't need that. Our greatest ministry, 98% of our ministry must be on the streets must be in the houses it must be in the friendship places it must be in the workplaces it must be outside yeah. we are the salt of the earth not the salt of the church yeah. we are the salt of the earth that's what the Bible says. And this, this character in, in, in Matthew 5, the Beatitudes, goes on to that one word. You are the salt of the earth. And the reason why we're not the salt is because sometimes we don't have the attitude that we must be. Blessed. Say happy. happy. How many of us want to be happy? If you want to be happy, he says, happy are the poor in spirit. Not are the poor in your wealth. Not in, this does not speak about financial wealth. Let me tell you something. In the world, both the rich and the poor are equally unhappy. <laughs> wealth doesn't determine your levels of happiness. Yeah. Godly wealth means nothing. Sorry, go, earthly wealth means nothing. Godly wealth means everything. Yeah. I was testing you guys. <laughs> Hallelujah. But look at this. It says, it says, blessed, say happy, happy. are the poor in spirit. Now, uh, many people preach on this, but I just want to make this one, one word come, come alive here. Okay. It says this word poor, we, we think, I mean, I used to think this, like when I, I was part of a traditional church, the more godly people became, you know, the more they walked down, they looked and they, you know, they were like this. This is how they came to church. They changed their outfits. They were wearing more whites than they were colors. That was how, you know, the spiritualness, it was increased. You know, they no longer let their hair loose. They tied it in a bun, you know. You know, this is, this is how, and that was the height of poor in spirit. No. no. Not your neighbor and say, no, 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 no. <laughs> say, no, 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 no. That's not it. Now, the poor in spirit understands. Not your neighbor and say, understands say understands the poor in spirit understands that they have nothing within them that is, can please God and Christ came and paid the price and restored them to God and their spirit knows that they can only be saved through Jesus Christ that is the blessed in poor in spirit you know what is the first miracle Jesus did the first miracle Jesus did was turn water into wine you know why not because he wanted the church to be alcoholics Hallelujah. This is most of my uncles, their favorite scripture in the Bible is the one that he turned the water to wine. They, they know that really well. And then when Paul wrote to Timothy, Paul said, drink a little wine. These are the two scriptures that my uncles would quote to me. I was like, thank you, Lord. I said, thou shalt not also be drunken. But anyway, the first miracle that Jesus did was he turned water into wine. What was that water used for? For purification. That water was used for purification. And Jesus took away their means of purification because Jesus is the means for purification. That's what he did. He took away. He said, listen, this is what I'm going to tell you. You can't purify yourselves. You can't. No matter how many barrels, how many gallons, how, many, how much ever you wash yourselves, you can never purify yourselves. We will always be below the mark. And Jesus came 
and he paid that price. And this is, and this is what we need to understand. Many of us come into the, this is the attitude we need to understand. Two bits of this is one, that we have no righteousness apart from Christ. Now for those of us who are really born again, who are fully on fire for God, there's a problem we can have. Our fire can substitute God's righteousness. We can think that we are better than other people. And that's a problem. We are no longer poor in spirit because we are haughty, judgmental. And we have to be very careful. You know what happens when we become full of pride? We lose our joy. Happy are the poor in spirit. You know, if you're not happy, check yourselves. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm going to put them out. Thank you. I'm preaching better than you're responding, I, I think. You know, I'm just saying, okay? Huh? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. You know, we kind of have to realize, one is, and in this church, this is the, de- we, you know, we can say, yeah, I've been there, done it, seen it all. No. We haven't seen even a point zero 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 one percent of the glory of God. We have seen nothing. And when we come in, if you think I've heard it, you know what? You're going to be miserable. It's your choice. You know what? Your spiritual walk, no one will be more, um, no one can steward your spiritual walk, walk better than you. It's not my job. My job is to pastor the congregation. But your job is to take care of your spiritual life. Check yourselves. Go and speak to people. Find out where you are. We're not islands. We're in fellowship with one another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when we realize that really without Christ, we're spiritually bankrupt. Okay. You know what we get? We get the resource of the kingdom of heaven. It says here, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And this is what I'm saying to the church. Now, any church that hosts revival often gets affected. And I'm preaching this so that we don't get affected. I want us to be soft in our spirits. Soft in our hearts. Hungry. We haven't seen anything yet. But by the grace of God, we stand. There's nothing else here. And as long as we remain poor in spirit, not, you know, really, I mean, I I find this, I find that we become so judgmental. Can I speak like this? This is okay? You know, like, when, I'll tell you, can I tell, I'm going to be honest. You know, when I, I'm always honest, but I'm going to be some more honest. Um, You know, like, I find, before when there were conferences and when I used to come to the, um, when I used to go to, all I, you know, when enter, all I kind of would check was whether I could find a seat somewhere. As you grow in the body of Christ, you find that everybody's looking to see where they're sitting. It doesn't matter. In the church, you all want to sit at the back, you know. But when you come into a conference, you want to sit where the pastors are sitting. And I've, I found, and this is something I thought to myself, that's not what it is about. You know, we, as we grow in the body of Christ, we become servant to more. If you're not serving anybody, you're not serving anybody. In the body of Christ, the more spiritual you are, the more you'll serve. You will serve one way or the other. Some people will serve through prayer. They will be the first to pray at a church. They will constantly be on their knees asking for revival. There will be some who will pray through service. 
There will be some who pray through ministry, some who will be out calling people. We have the servant king, and he built the body so that the body works together for the revival of a city. We're not here just so that we can get drunk in the Holy Ghost. We have a purpose. We want to see the greatest outpouring of God's glory that's ever been seen on the earth. We want to see it. We want to see it on the streets. We want the streets impacted. I want to see healings that have never been seen before. I want to build up a team of people who will be firebrands that go to the end of the earth and who hopefully take me too, you know? <laughs> Hallelujah. There's a purpose. You and I are the purpose. Blessed are the meek in spirit. For they will inherit the resources of heaven. They will inherit the kingdom of God. As we become, as we, blessed are the poor in spirit. As we become poor in spirit, actually we get richer. We get richer and richer and richer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says here, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Now this word mourn, you know, and this is what the body of Christ thinks it means. It means just coming and crying. And we think that that actually, these two words have been, the, these two words have been misunderstood. We took it on to mean poverty of wealth and mourning of attitude. That isn't it. This is one of the strongest words for mourning that you could ever use. And it says, blessed are those who mourn. Now, this word mourn actually means to, um, to pray with a spirit of grace and supplication. Zechariah uses this word to cry out for a nation. Blessed are those who mourn. I'll tell you, of, you know, they asked me not to name them, but there are women in this house that decided to cry out for revival. Every Friday, they work full-time jobs, have families. And they were here on Fridays, crying out for revival. And revival came. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Now I'm saying these are two inward things. Poor in spirit. No one knows the state of your spirit other than you and God. You can walk around as humbly as you want. But God knows the heart. And I'm saying there must be that humility of spirit within us. You know, and if there's ever an identity this church has, I pray that it be that we are the most humble before God and the most hospitable before man. Or the most hospitable before God and the most humble before man. Both are work. Both work. Because we want to be, consider the other better than us. It's a scripture. We might not like it. It's a scripture. And church, if we want to host revival, we can't have pride. We can't. And if we want to host revival, we can't, we can't say that, um, I mean, we, we have to have a desire to cry out for it. Many people come on a... And this will happen. Many people come on a, sun, on, a, on a weekday night, on London awakening night at 7 o'clock. And they'll just keep watching to see what's happening. But there'll be two or three or four people 
within that congregation who will be the ones who are crying out for revival. And they will change the atmosphere of a place. That's what we need. And if a hundred of us cry out for revival, we will see a land changed. And if 120 cry out for revival, we will see the globe changed. Because he did it once. He'll do it again. All we need is to really, the scripture says, blessed, happy are those who mourn. Come on, that's an oxymoron. Happy are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Now look at this. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now church, this word meek is a, is a word that actually, it means someone who controls their strength. It's not blessed are the weak, but it means blessed are the meek. Uh, the, a meek person is someone who has a powerful personality, but is controlling it and having humility. You know? And, and in this world, when we show meekness, what happens? We think we'll be pushed out. But the scripture says, when you show meekness, you will inherit the earth. Wait, let me say this. The earth becomes yours. You become powerful. The meek become powerful. Now, if I were to come and speak right now about the Holy Spirit, the place atmosphere will change. Because there's a presence of God in this place. But we need to have the character to carry him. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Just want you to close your eyes on this one. I have a question. What do we really hunger for? Our services are between you and God. Really, we want you to encounter God as you come into this place. And we're here just to facilitate that. I really have a question for the church. Years ago, um, before I had my daughter and just around the time that we, we, I had gotten married, um, someone um, left their newborn baby in my care with, with another person because obviously they didn't fully trust me on this, but uh, they could. I would have handled the baby well. Okay. So we were, uh, this, my friend and I, she and I were uh, in, like, kind of taking care of this baby a couple of days while the mother was looking for uh, going from interviews and looking for jobs and stuff like that. And we were living in the city of Dubai. And this baby was about two months, three months old. And when this baby, like um, the baby had just, I mean, it was two month old babies and three months, they, they basically just have milk, you know. They don't have chicken or they don't have um, uh, pizza or any of them, just in case you're wondering. Okay, I'm just letting you know for those of you who are oblivious to this truth, they only have milk. So one day, you know, we were standing in the kitchen and uh, I was standing there with my friend and I, um, we... Uh, we were holding the baby and my friend's husband walks in and he had just brought this new chocolate from, um, from uh, this, the store nearby and he comes and gives it in the kitchen and says, do you guys like this? So I had one, um, my friend had one and this baby looked at us like, where's mine? You know, that, that, that look like, where's mine? Where's my chocolate? Where's my chocolate? And so the, um, the, the, uh, the husband um, asked, I said, uh, can I give it to her? Um, and she was the um, my friend was like no 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 you can't give her chocolate okay and but he opens his chocolate and you know he was really obedient husband and gives it to the baby and just a little bit just a taste he said let me give the baby a taste the baby just puts it in the you know the puts a taste in the mouth and instantly 
the baby becomes what I call drool baby. Was just, it became drool master, just drooling and drooling and drooling instantly. And wherever the husband went, wherever the chocolate went, that baby kept his eyes on that chocolate. It was like this and the water would come and just drip and we had to take towels and just like this and this and this. And, and, um, and you know, we did give the baby a little bit. The mother comes back, brings, takes, takes the baby home, brings the baby back the next day and says this unusual comment. It says, I don't know what happened to my baby, but she doesn't want milk anymore. And we all were like, what, really? Nah, you know, that's what we were like. But the thing is, the Holy Spirit spoke to me a life lesson there. Two things he said. One, that baby didn't take his eyes, her eyes, off the chocolate. And her body and her mannerism showed forth her desire. What she wanted was there for everybody to see. The second thing is that nothing else satisfied the baby. Once you taste the Lord, don't take your eyes off him. <laughs> nothing else should satisfy you. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. And this is a call to the church, to the body. And I've been giving this call for the last couple of days. There is a call given. There is a time. We are in a Kairos moment. We are in a God moment. When it's time to sow, we sow. When it's time to reap, we reap. Don't come tomorrow and say, I want to do it. It might not be available. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Your hunger and your thirst will be cleared in your actions, in where your focus is. Hallelujah. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the poor in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. I don't have time to go through all of this, but I just want to end with Isaiah 35. Just lift up your hands. He's here. Acts 3.26 says, God sent Jesus to bless us. And as we get blessed, we must become a blessing to this nation. Each one of us is called. Each one of us has only 24 hours in a day. Each one of us has different issues, different needs, different requirements. But if we hunger, God will release the grace to do what we're called to do. Please don't tell him, I can't. The Lord says, the Lord says this. To Isaiah, I said, who will go for me? That's all. Isaiah 35, just, you know, I want you to just let the Lord speak over you, the word. The wilderness and the wasteland shall be glad for them. This is when revival comes. The wilderness and the wasteland will be glad for us. And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. And it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice, with, even with joy and singing. I believe that there is a call in the body of Christ right now.
for two sets of people. For the worshipers, for the singers, and for the people who will pray. In the time of the latter rain, ask for rain. Church, we can't take a back step in prayer. We can't take a step, back step in worship. We must be at the forefront of worship. Worship is our destiny. Amen. Worship is our inheritance. You don't need anybody's permission to dance, to sing, to joy in God's house. You know, some people, they, they say, you know, they're, they say, I feel like I'm drawing attention when I come to the front and dance. You can dance at the back. No one said you have to dance here. But worship. Don't sit down and just say, God, I'm watching to see what you will do next. Usher in his presence. Be the driving force of a revival that will shake the nations. We're still at the beginning. We have the choice. It says this, And the glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, and the excellence of Carmel and Sharon. And they shall see the glory of the Lord, the excellency of our God. This morning as I was driving here, I asked the Lord. I said, shall I really see your face, God? He said, yes. We know the end of the story. We will see his face. We know the end of the story. The church is without spot or blemish. We know the end of the story. There is an awakening that will awaken the entire church, that will restore man's relationship, and there will be a reformation that takes place. We will see this, and it shall not be by our might or by our strength, but it shall be by the Spirit of the Lord. We know the end of the story. I don't care how inconvenient it is. Every breath you have, God has given you. How much more inconvenient would it be if we lost that breath? I'm speaking to the church. It will cost us everything. But it will bless us everything. Hallelujah. And this is what the Lord is saying. This is the word, Isaiah 35, 3. Church, strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful hearted, be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. With the recompense of God, he will come and save you. Our God is coming in a mighty, powerful way. We know that what we've had thus far is a taste. So I'm encouraging the church right now. Make, strengthen the weak hands. You know, those who are in need right now in the body of Christ, strengthen them. Look, wait, wait, wait. This is not spiritual talk I'm doing here. I'm speaking actuality within the body of Christ there are people within our body that require need and it isn't one person's or two person's job it is a whole family job Amen. it is a body job yeah. strengthen the weak hands 
and make firm the feeble knees. You know what feeble knees are? People who have fallen. This is the time for the body of Christ, our body to go and strengthen and make firm, bring back those who have fallen. There is an anointing for this right now. We need to take this out into the streets. We need to take it into the houses, into the families, into our workplace, into the schools. Church say, revival is not just for me. It's for everybody. And I'm the carrier. I'm the carrier. I'm the carrier. Say, I'm the carrier. And when we do this, when we do this, this is what is going to happen. There shall be an acceleration in this move. As we take ownership of what two things, one, A, of our character, our inward being and our outward demonstration of God's glory and his power and his might, when we strengthen the weak and make firm the feeble knees, a highway will come. A highway will come. There will be a road. It will be called the highway of holiness. And the unclean will not pass on it. They won't need to because they will come into the presence of God and they will choose Christ and Christ will make them holy. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're praying and pressing into this. So I'm just speaking to the church. We're approaching week 10. We are strong. Because Christ has made us strong. He has prepared the body. We can do this church. And we have enough energy within us to carry this forward. Because we have the energy and the power of Christ. Listen, we can do this. Yes. We just have to relax in him. Set our hearts right. Keep ourselves soft. Keep ourselves hungry. Pray. Desire. Work for the betterment of others. Strengthen the feeble. Strengthen the weak. That's all. It's doable. It's doable. It's within our character. It's within our nature. So I'm calling the church together at this time. The scripture says in Matthew 5, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. The greatest peace we can do, the greatest peace we can make, is the peace between man and God. That's what Jesus did, and he was called the son of God. We are called to be peacemakers on this earth. To restore people's relationship with God. Whether it's the feeble knees, whether it's the weak, whether it's the backslidden. The ball is in our courts. This is a message that the Lord asked me to share today. And I'm leaving it with you all. This week, call at least five people. Share the gospel. Share the good news. Someone who's struggling, call them up. Don't make it about you. Make it about God. Don't make it about, oh, I minister to them. No. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Make it about God. So that we, it's not a tick box for us. Church, let's take it to the streets. Let's take it to the places. Shall we all just stand up?
I just want to deal with the area of any spiritual pride that we may have. Of any judgment that we've made. Of others, of leaders. I feel there's a need for us to repent of words we've said. A words of judgment against the body of Christ, against the people within the body. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. And I feel within the body of Christ, we have become gossipers and slanderers. We've become judgmental, full of pride, arrogant. And we have to stop. We have become sometimes uncaring. Waiting for others to serve us first before we serve. We have become unavailable for God. To truly use us. That's not what we want to be. In the time of the latter reign... We want to ask for rain. Lord, Isaiah was a high priest, Lord, when he encountered you and he said, Woe is me, I'm a man of unclean lips. Lord, I pray, Father, that we become aware of where we are really and we understand that you paid the price for us, Lord Jesus, on that cross. And we confess our sins to you. I want you to just confess. Speak to him. This day is about restoring our attitudes. The Lord is just reminding me of the story uh, of this uh, biblical account. When Jesus and Peter were speaking after Jesus' resurrection, Peter was asked by Jesus, do you love me? And Peter said, yes. He said, feed my sheep. For God, his body matters. For for the Lord Jesus, his body matters to him. How we treat his body is very important. We can't show disinterest. Allow the Lord to speak to you. Because if you do... It will set you on the right path into your destiny. This talk might not be for everybody. It will be for those who are hungry and who really want to step into their greater calling. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, yes, Lord. You know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. And he said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, tend my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were young or you girded yourself and walked where you wished, and when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. Then he said, follow me.
And he said, follow me. Like that child, like that baby. Everything in our lives should show him that we are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. This is not the time for lukewarmness. Just lift up your hands to the Lord. Just tell him, I surrender, God. Ask him now, Lord, what would you have me do? And if he shows you some people right now, I want you to make a note of them in your mind because he wants you to call them or bless them. He wants you to love on them. Ask him, Lord, who would you have me minister to? Come on. Ask him to show you people. Ask him if there's a work. Lord, would you like me to preach on the streets? Or would you like me to go to somebody's house? Or would you like me to serve in the, in the church or in a ministry? What would you like me to do? Ask him. Make yourself available. How many of you are having the Lord speak to you? How many of you saw an image of a person or somebody that the Lord is asking you to? Come on. We're not asking you. Come on. The Lord should be showing everybody in this place. Say, Lord, show me who I can love on. And I want you to take a commitment this week to whatever the Lord has shown you. He is the God of now. This is such a simple thing. Whoever he's showing you, show them affection now. Show them love now. Don't wait till Friday. You are his hands. You are his feet. You are his heart. You are his voice. You are his ambassador. If you don't do this, he will have to raise up somebody else. Every one of these people that the Lord put into your heart is his son and his daughter. I'm empowering you to be the gospel. Hallelujah. 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 Will you do what you said you would to the Lord? Yes. Did you meet God today? Yes? So just lift up your hands. Powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. I want you to now ask for a miracle for your lives personally. Ask for a miracle. Don't ask for something that's possible. Ask for something impossible. Even if you asked last week, ask again. Ask for something. You don't have to stop at one. Some of you are thinking this is just one. Ask for how many? Come on. Come on. Ask for the impossible. Ask. Maybe it's someone coming to church next week. or Ask for the impossible. Now, I want you to declare over that impossible situation. Listen, we're doing spiritual warfare here. We're praying. 
Yeah? I want you to pray for healing of relationships also. Hallelujah. And we're going to sing what a powerful name it is. And we're going to declare the name of Jesus over every situation. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Now let's pray for our city. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Now the Lord asked me to do something and I'm going to ask everybody to do it too. On Tuesdays, um, I'm going to ask the whole church to fast. This is going to be a regular thing. If you're unable to do long, -term, long time fast, um, you can go vegetarian, skip a meal, skip um, or eat one meal in a day, whatever it is, fast. Tuesdays from now on, Capstone Church is going to fast. Hallelujah. We're going to fast and we're also going to pray. Okay? So the time that you should be eating, okay, you be praying. And whatever you would have spent on that money, give it to the poor. Give it to those in need. Bless those who are feeble or weak or anything. So if you're working in the city, go to somebody on the street and say, can I bless you? We're going to be the hands and the feet of God in the city. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Tuesdays, we're fasting. Okay? Just in case, nudge your neighbor and say, it's Tuesday. Okay? Just one meal, and the Lord should remind you. So go in. The, come on, let's lift up our hands for our final blessing. Go in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the love of the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit of God. Be blessed. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Greet somebody. Say hi if you're new. Is, is anyone new to Capstone Church? First time, first Sunday service. Oh, hi. What's your name? Sorry? Wendy. Nice to meet you, Wendy. Uh, praise God. Thank you for coming. Anybody else? Hi. What's your name? Mike. Michael. And? Sandra. Hi, Michael and Sandra. Come on, let's give them a big God bless you. <laughs> Praise God. We're so happy to have you here. I don't know. I think we have some welcome packs. Um, and uh, London Awakening uh, prayer is tomorrow evening at 7. Yes? Praise God. There's Sorry, Monday. No, no, Tuesday. <laughs> I'm just checking to see if you're... Ah, Praise God. Also, just to let you know that tea and coffee is served downstairs. And we've got DNA here at 12.45. 12.45. Yeah, if, if everybody can just take their stuff when they go downstairs so that they can, we can clear the hall.